Hey, today we're going to be making an awesome blush artwork based on Louise Nicholson's work. So, an awesome blush, it's an artwork that puts together various objects to create a pleasing composition. For your composition, I want you to show rhythm. Rhythm is achieved through repeating lines, forms, shapes, colors, and textures. It increases kind of visual tempo in an artwork and provides a path for the viewer's eye to follow. So when we think about rhythm, we think of two things, pattern and repetition, but they're both slightly different. A pattern is a recurring element in a particular arrangement. So it can be elements arranged in a way to create a particular pattern. Now, repetition refers to an element that just simply repeats. It may be a form, line, or texture. Now, these elements that are repeating can alter in size. They can also alter in their color, their value, their different types of textures, and this all makes the rhythm seen in the work more dynamic. So, rhythm is both a little bit of pattern and a little bit of repetition. So to begin, go around your house and collect random objects. Now, when you're getting these objects, I want you to ask yourself, how can these objects enhance one another? Think about trying to find objects that have visual similarities so you're showing that rhythm a little bit better. So for my assemblage, I just collected things that um, we were throwing out. So some plastic bags, some bubble wrap that we got in a package, an empty masking roll tape, um, this package of cotton candy grapes, which by the way, taste like cotton candy and they're amazing. Um, I have a sparkling water can and then some wine corks um, that were given to me. I did not drink eight bottles of wine. Um, <laughs> and then some um, like four wooden balls that I randomly had. So grab things that you just have around the house. Now, if you don't have things around the house and you're running out of things that you could use, go back outside and collect things that you can find in your backyard. So these are just some things I found in my backyard, some sticks, pine cones, and some bark. I won't be using objects from nature. I'm gonna be using the objects I used in the previous slide, but know that you can do this if you need to. Now that you've chosen your objects, choose what you want to build in or on. And you have two options for this. First option, you can build your assemblage in um, a cardboard box. Now the cardboard box should be about the size of a shoe box. Um, no bigger, no smaller. So like, look, compare it to my head. Like this is the size box that you want to get. <laughs> Just drop my glue gun. <laughs> be careful. Another thing you can work on is just like a sheet of cardboard that's the same size of um, like a piece of computer paper. So computer paper what is what, like eight and a half by 11 inches? So that's what, um, you know, your cardboard backing could be. Now, if you don't have like a cardboard box laying around your house, you could use the back end of like a cereal box or something. Just something that's kind of firm that can like withstand having objects glued down to it. And then we need a couple of extra things to help put all this together. I recommend you get a hot glue gun. Um, if you don't have one already, it's gonna make it really hard to glue things down um, in your box or on that sheet of cardboard. Another thing you're gonna need is some paint. Now this could be like house paint you have laying around your house. It could be like a empty, not empty bottle of spray paint, but it could be some spray paint you might have left over sitting in your garage. Um, if you need to go out and get it, spray paint's like pretty cheap. It's about like three bucks at Walmart. So, um, you know, just buy a bottle of spray paint. Also maybe get a color of something that you need to use to fix around your house. So you could use it again after this. And then you need to um, use your imagination to make a really cool, awesome blush that shows for them. So here we go. All right, when you begin, I recommend you lay everything out so you can see all your options. And then, you know, grab, uh, you know, maybe your favorite material and start manipulating that inside your box. Just kind of just figure out like, okay, what's going to look good? What's going to look bad? Um, I kind of like this as a backing. Um, I really love this, um, you know, rounded edge. This itself creates rhythm by repeating the same, um, you know, circular form throughout the entire um, piece of plastic. But like, even as I'm adding that in there, it kind of just looks sloppy. I don't like this edge. So, hmm, 
I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna see what happens if I just roll it. And then maybe I'll just kind of stuff those in there. I have a couple of strips of this bubble wrap that I think I can probably just get it to fit inside. At least I hope so, with each other. Let me get the third one here, roll that up. Oh my gosh, it's harder than it looks. Okay, so that looks cool, right? I mean, that's a little bit of the rhythm in itself right there. We have rhythm of the shapes inside it, but then we have the rhythm of um, repeating this act, same form several different times. But, you know, I have an empty space over here. So there's a couple of different things I can do. Um, you know, I can go in and I could maybe put some corks on the bottom there to create uh, oh gosh, hey, obviously like I would glue these down after if I would like how they look, but part of me feels like they would get lost in the back there. So I'm gonna take those out. I'm actually gonna play around with this aluminum foil and see if I can get another really interesting texture that I can repeat in this section over here, just so it kind of contrasts slightly with the ripples that we're seeing here, but give it a little bit different type of a rippled look. So, I mean, I'm just crinkling the paper to get a different texture and putting it in there. Now, I like how that looks, so I'm going to start using the masking tape in this can. So I'm going to place it in, but, you know, never place things in exactly how we're used to seeing them. Change out the orientation. Now, the front of that can is really interesting, but I kind of like the opposite end because that circular shape reflects the circular shapes that I'm seeing elsewhere in the bubble wrap. And I also like how the masking tape roll kind of frames the can that I'm seeing. So now I'm gonna cut out a piece of that aluminum foil so the can can kind of sit in there. So this is something that you guys can do is if you don't really have a hot glue gun, you can use the objects to kind of pressure them in so they sit in the object or the box. Now, I don't like the placement of this can because I'm not quite following the rule of thirds. So I'm going to shift it up just a little bit more and then kind of shove that aluminum foil back in so I don't have to glue that stuff down and that'll hold it in place. And then there we go, I'm following the rule of thirds. And I'm still showing rhythm and repetition because I have the, I'm repeating that circular shape that I'm seeing in the can now, even with these um, wooden balls. So notice that I'm putting them an equal distance apart from one another to almost create a pattern in between the bubble wrap. So it's bubble wrap, um, wooden sphere, bubble wrap, wooden sphere, and now I'm starting to use these corks. Now I decided to use the corks with the end up so it's still repeating that circular shape. Um, I was thinking about laying it flat, but I'm not going to, so now I'm going to create that S-like curve that I um, just, you know, trace around with my finger. So what I'm going to start doing is just gluing the sides of these together to create the S-curve, and I'm just, you know, taking it back and forth to see how the curve is fitting in around the can. And I was, as I was working on this, I realized how hard it is to actually make a really good composition with all of these random objects. I have a lot more respect for artists like Louise Nettleson that make these awesome blages because um, I was finding it rather difficult um, to create. And even as I was making these corks, you know, I wasn't quite sure if this was the best thing for me to do, but um, I was working on it, so I just kept going with it. And um, so, you know, try things out, don't just, you know, set on like the first idea, experiment around with it. Like this was probably my um, third idea that I had with the corks before um, I made my final decision. And don't feel like you have to use everything. So this is going to be my semi-finished assemblage. I'm done constructing it and now I can move on to using the spray paint. Make sure you spray it outside and spray your piece over top of a piece of cardboard or on some type of garbage bag so you don't get spray paint on your grass. You can use whatever color you want so you do not have to use black or white and have fun with it. So just to review, in your awesome blanche you need to show rhythm by utilizing pattern and repetition in the work. The pieces that you use within the work should have a visual similarity, so it helps unify your piece together. You need to spray paint or paint your assemblage any color you wish, 
and then you need to complete it inside a shoe box or on an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of cardboard. Good luck and have fun.